Good morning, good morning, happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. <laughs> we finished the evening last night, Harry and I did, uh, praying out the old year and praying in the new one and watching God move. And I'm excited to see and hear what he has to say this morning. I am hoping that uh, many morning, of you will join morning. me. Happy new Can you year. hear me as I'm turning my mic down? There we go. There's a little bit of a delay there, isn't it? Um, wow. Everybody thinks that some magic pill happens between midnight and midnight 01, and yet nothing really changes except us. The calendar clicks over, and then we determine if we're going to begin again. I want to read to you as you come in this morning. Um, I want, oh, good morning, Anna. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Colby. Good morning. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Hi, everyone, Rachel says. To all of you, I have my Kleenex today, not because I'm crying, but because I am uh, always mourning. It's morning here, and I just pray that all of you are doing well this morning. Good morning, Laura Kokenauer, who's actually sitting beside me and flew Good in morning. yesterday. <laughs> we had a great uh, night last night of prayer, and then um, I I go to bed early and uh, spend a lot of time. Last night I was praying for Pastor Mark uh, and uh, Pastor Kendra, and uh, a little after midnight, Pastor Mark got to go home at, from the hospital, thank God. Good morning, Tish. Thank you for your... You were the very first person to give a gift to our ministry in 2021. Uh, for me, it was in the middle of the night. I think it was 4 a.m., so I'm not sure. Uh, you're in Ohio, so that would have been 7 in the morning. So, uh, so nice to see you, and thank you so much. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, uh, Jean. Happy New Year to you, too. Good morning, Lisa. Thank you all for joining me last night and for also coming back in this morning. Good morning, Deborah DePriest. If you happen to miss last night, I recommend you go back and watch it. I believe the Lord was really moving. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Savannah. Good morning, Sherry from Sugar Hill. Good morning, Sunny. Uh, Sunny, I told Debbie to be expecting a call from you over the weekend uh, to get you into the school beginning Monday morning. If, um, if you all registered yesterday and I didn't get your book and workbook in the mail, uh, because it's a holiday, um, you'll get it, but it won't. It won't be by Monday. No worries. It's simply your book and your workbook for School of Worship. Many of you, this is your first time. Is your homework? It's not your daily work. So your daily work is totally different. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you will get it. You just might not get it for Monday. So, uh, good morning, uh, Celinda. Uh, good morning. Uh, Kim, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Let me take a little sip of coffee. When we went off the air last night, I was coughing, and I got a little crumb in my throat, <coughs> and I'm starting back up this morning. <coughs> good morning, Karen. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you. Love you all. Good morning, Steve Villalobos. Could you leave a comment, please, so I know exactly uh, who that is. I don't know if it's Steve or is it Martha. Good morning, Lucy. Good morning, Miss Kathy. All of you coming in. Good morning, my cousin Lacey. Uh, good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Kathy. Kathy Neary, so nice to see you. All of you who have joined me this morning, um, I'll if I if you have questions, I'll come back in a moment and take a look at the messages. But I just want to talk to you about this year, and I couldn't help but go on into John a little. Uh, only because of, as I was listening to it this morning, it almost said exactly what I was thinking. And we would be in John 16. I'll pick this up on uh, Monday. John 16. You never know. I might do it over the weekend. Who knows? But I'm planning on doing it Monday. But I want, I want you to hear the first few words. And then I'm going to read you uh, something that Pastor Gregory Pope sent us Um this morning and then I'm going to tell you what the Lord's been showing me so uh, John 16 Jesus warns his disciples that's the topic heading in the Passion Translation I cannot say uh, with more certainty that be ready 
that for this year. I feel like I'm warning you, but it's more than that. I felt the Spirit of God say several days ago concerning 2021 when I was praying in the Spirit, two little words, brace yourself. So if you want to take notes for 2021, write down, brace yourself. And I believe that was given for the soul realm, where you think, where you feel, uh, what your mind, will, emotions, brace yourself. But for your natural man, uh, your thinking man, I heard the Lord plainly say, trust in the Lord. And when I heard that one, it was not even a audible, it was a billboard. <laughs> I saw a flashing billboard in front of my spirit man as I was praying for 2021. And the billboard said, trust in the Lord. And then in my soul, I heard, brace yourself. So put those two together. To trust in the Lord for the coming 2021, we need to brace ourselves. Brace yourself. In other words, there's a shaking. There is a shaking coming. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Anybody want to look that scripture up for me? Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. We sang about it when we did, uh, I believe it's on the I Am a Worshipper CD that talks about the coming of the Lord. He's coming. Awake, awake, oh sleeper. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken in 2021. Now, I have told you this so that you would not surrender to confusion or doubt. That's the first verse in John 16, and we'll get into that first thing Monday morning, but I want you to hear it for the beginning of this year. I have told you this so that you would not surrender to confusion or doubt. Wow. Brace yourself. Trust in the Lord. For everything that can be shaken will be shaken. For you will be excommunicated from the synagogues, and a time is coming when you will be put to death by misguided ones who will presume to be doing God's, doing God a great service by putting you to death. Now here's what I want, you, I want you to hear in the Spirit from me. If you're already dead, no one can kill you. If you are dead to self, no one can hurt you. Remember the vision that I've shared so many times in school of worship? God took me there in the spirit. The spirit of the Lord took me to a cemetery. Wasn't that unusual for me? I grew up uh, in Choctaw County, Mississippi on 415 High, Mississippi Highway, and it was in the curve of the road. And my daddy bought Salem Methodist Church and moved it across the street and put our home there. So there's two Salem Methodist churches. There's the, Indi there's the United Methodist Church, and then right beside it is the Salem Independent Methodist Church. And then across from both of those is this massive cemetery. And then across the road is my house. And that, that's all that's there. So I, I grew up playing in the cemetery. We had a little country store. We didn't have any grass in our front yard. So if I wanted grass, guess what? I went to the cemetery. And I played in the, the part of the cemetery that had no uh, graves in it yet. So to go into a cemetery is not a scary thing to me. I don't feel like it's Halloween or anything to do that. And so the Spirit of the Lord took me into a cemetery in, in a vision, stood me in front of a tombstone, had a man's name on it. It had his birth date and that little dash mark. It had his death date. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, hurt that man's feelings. And, and I was confused. I, I didn't even know what the Lord was asking me to do. So I waited a minute and tried to figure it out in my mind. And then the Spirit of the Lord said again to me, say mean things to him. And I'm, again, I'm not doing anything. I'm trying to figure out what the heck the Spirit of God is asking me to do. And finally he said, offend him. Say hurtful things to that man. And finally, I stopped. And in my vision, I looked up at the Spirit of God and I said, I can't hurt his feelings or offend him. He's dead. And the Spirit of God said, that's right. When you get dead enough to yourself, nobody can hurt your feelings. Nobody can offend your heart. Nobody can get you off because you're dead already. And then he brought me out of the vision. And I realized he was saying, 
You ain't dead yet, girl. And if you want to go where I'm calling you to go, you're going to have to die to yourself. You're going to have to get over yourself. You're going to have to stop being hurt feelings. You're going to have to stop letting people's words get you off. You're going to have to stop being offended because if you're going to go where I've called you to go, you got to get over you. And you got to be all about him. So hear that. For 2021, if you're not dead yet, you need to start killing your flesh right now. Because this is a year where a parting of the ways between flesh and spirit, a fork in the road, has begun today. 2021, boom, fork in the road. You're going to have to make a decision. Which road are you going to walk? Because you cannot walk both. Either stay carnally minded and stay on the road of exceeding sinfulness of sin, which we're going to get to the numbers in a moment, or take the other fork and walk in the rapturous position of being raptured from carnality, raptured from flesh, raptured from self, and walking with the Spirit of God. And that's where we are in 2021. Hopefully you'll continue to listen because I have a lot of revelation to share with you. Now, and they will do these things because they don't know anything about the Father or me. I'm telling you this now so that when the, their time comes, you will remember that I foretold it. I'm telling you, at the end of 2021, you're going to remember what I said today. Just like at the end of 2020, I hope you remembered that I prophesied the whole year that this is the year of the redeemed being restored. And we had to have restoration all last year to survive. God said it is the re-year as we entered the decade of 20, as we came out of 2019 and we went in the decade of 20. Now we are in 2021. That is the decade of the re sound. Do, de, re, re, minor third. Do, re. We are in it right now. We have been in it now for a year. And we are in the year of the re-sounds. Redeemed, restored, revived, repaired, reset, start again. Now with that in mind, I'm going to flip over. Uh, oh, I see that, Tasha. She said, I'm not dead. I want to be completely raptured from self. Absolutely. Anyone else want to just admit that right now? Admit it and quit it. Let's get on down the road and get past it. When you get dead enough to yourself, no one can hurt or offend you. My, 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 son, he says. Absolutely. That's Hebrews 12, 27. Uh, once, yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken will remain. Amen, Anna. Thanks for giving me that. Thanks for giving me that, J Jesse. Bracing ourselves. Ready. Thanks, Tasha. That is exactly right. Good morning, everyone. Now, let me get over to what Pastor Gregory sent Harry and me early this morning. He doesn't know I'm talking about him right now. Uh, he said, uh, good, good morning, Uncle Harry and Aunt Cheryl. Blessed New Year. Press toward. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. This is Philippians 4. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run, it's actually Philippians 3, I run straight into the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. And that's from the Passion Translation. And I believe, let me see, Philippians 3, 12 through 14. And this is what uh, Pastor Gregory says, pa Pastor Gregory Pope from Douglas, Georgia. Steady forward, determination as we rest in his work in in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. His yoke is easy and his burden in light is light. What you make happen for others, God will do for you. Seed time and harvest, you are walking. You are a walking seed house. Whatever seed you sow will grow. You are born again of an incorruptible seed 
and in him you live, move, and have your being in Christ. Your life is hidden in Christ. So that's all a great word from Pastor Gregory this morning. Now, I just want you to hear me by the Spirit. Let's talk about what I believe is coming for the next 365 days. And I also believe it's already begun. It began September the 18th, 2020, when we began the new Jewish year of 5781. That began September the 18th, 2020, when we began the Jewish year of 5781. <clears throat> now, it overlaps now with 2021, 20 being the number for redeemed or redemption, and we are the redeemed. Our kinsman redeemer has bought us and paid for us, and we can walk as the redeemed, or we can refuse that redemption. That choice is up to you. I choose to walk fully as the one who's been bought, and I've been teaching this to you all year. I am his. His is marked on me. It's written on my hand. It's written on my heart. It's written on my forehead. Anybody can see I belong to him. I am redeemed, and he's my kinsman redeemer, and I'm his redeemed. Therefore, redemption is prevalent and relevant for me throughout this decade, already begun a year ago, and I am still in it, the year and the decade of the redeemed. So we should not be walking in fear as others. We should not be worried or fretful or looking back. For looking back will only bring you back into dead things and cause your flesh to resurrect, your carnality to resurrect. And I don't know about you, but I don't want a carnality of the past. I don't want a resurrection of my past. I don't want a resurrection of carnality. I don't want a resurrection of flesh. I want to leave those dead things in the grave and move into my future. As Philippians 3 says, I press, I push toward what's coming. I am not afraid of what's coming because he is with me. He is walking with me. He is walking with you. So why would I fret going forward? And remember, if you pull dead things with you, it makes you stink. Remember when we studied the chapter about Lazarus. You can either be decomposing or regenerating, but you can't be both. Just a few weeks ago, as I prayed for 2021, the Lord gave me this reword for 2021, regeneration. So that means if you were in degeneration, you can begin again with regeneration. Everywhere the locust has eaten, you can ask God to regenerate it. Every year you've lost, every day you've lost, every week you've lost. You can say, Father, regenerate the years, regenerate the months, regenerate the days, regenerate my relationships that I ruined because I did something that caused them to start degenerating. Now I want regeneration. So there's your reword to go with redemption. We have regeneration generation and God is regenerating us in 2021. Now, as you hit the word regeneration, I'm going to give you the scripture God gave me for our partners. And as I send out this January uh, to our, our partners, if you send an offering, you get this letter back. And I'm going to start with the scripture God gave me. And when I started typing this, this was not the scripture I had in my mind to type, but the Spirit of God gave it to me, so I started typing. And it's Je Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10 in the Message Bible. God reached out, touched my mouth, and said, look. Now, I find that so interesting. If You, you would think if he was going to touch your mouth, he would say, say. Or if he was going to say, look, he would touch your eyes. But he says, he touched my mouth and he said, look, which means your hearing and your saying is coming together as one this year. What you hear is going to affect what you say and what you say is going to affect what you hear. So Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10 in the message reads this way. God reached out. He touched my mouth and he said, look. Just wrap your, you got to get outside of the box to even wrap your brain around that. He touched my mouth and he said, look. <laughs> In other words, 
See with your words. Hello? Wrap your brain around that. See with your words. Whatever is coming out of your mouth is what you're going to see. See with your words. Whatever you are saying, you will be seeing this year. Now remember, 2020, the year of the redeemed, the decade of the redeemed began. We enter 2021. It overlaps 5781. I'm going to get to the numbers. God reached out, touched my mouth, and said, Look, I've just put my words in your mouth. It's not your words. He's put his words in your mouth. If you want to see what God has for you in 2021, you better only say what he puts in your mouth. Amen. This better be a year of your words are silent and only his words are coming forth out of your mouth. I just put my words in your mouth. I hand delivered them to you. Now remember, this is going to blow your mind. It blew mine. Remember when Jesus was outing Judas. I believe it was John 13 when we studied this about the foot washing. And then he outed Judas as, his, as his, the one who was going to uh, bring accusation against him. The one who had betrayed him. He was outing his betrayer. And he took the bread, took communion. He put it in the wine and he put it in Judas' mouth. That is huge. What are you going to do this year? Are you going to be saying only what he says? Or are you going to be his betrayer? He's putting his words in your mouth. His communion with you. This is going to be a separation year. And you're going to look back on it and say, I, I can't believe they chose that way. I, I can't believe I've known them all my life. I can't believe they went that direction. I can't believe that this fork in the year, fork in the road year, they chose the wrong fork. But you can't be looking over at them. It's going to be hard enough to keep yourself on the right fork. It's going to be hard enough to keep you going this way, God's way. The year of the rapture from flesh, the rapture from carnality. Do you think that the devil's going to make this easy for you? He's going to pull on your flesh. He's going to pull on your carnality. He's going to try to hurt your feelings. He's going to try to get you offended. He's going to try to get you off this whole year. And I'm telling you, brace yourself. You have got to guard more than you have ever guarded your words and your heart and your feelings to not be pulled into carnality and the way of the flesh this year. I have never known a year like this one. I never thought we'd get here. In 2000, I expected the rapture to come, and I've been looking for the rapture of the Lord ever since, and this could be the very year the rapture happens. Now, I'm not saying it will. I'm saying it could be because of what the numbers mean. But I'm telling you, this is the year of the fork in the road, and you better get raptured from your flesh. You better get raptured from your carnality this year. You better be caught away from the flesh, caught away from carnality, caught away from the ways of the world, caught away from the culture of this age. This is the year. For the one that's coming after. Wow. Now let's keep going. Let me finish reading Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10 to you. He said, look, I've just put my words in your mouth. Hand delivered. See what I've done? I've given you a job to do among nations and governments. A red letter day. Now, what job did he give you to do? Among nations and governments. This is the greatest year and probably why I launched Women of the Nation in 2017. Mm -hmm. It is probably for this year because the scripture says, I've given you a job to do among nations and governments. A red letter day. 2021, January the 1st, is a red letter day. We have been assigned nations and governments. Your job, if you choose to accept your mission, 
This is a mission impossible. And only those who believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is going to make it through this year. A red letter day. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, your job is to pull up and tear down. Take apart and demolish and then start over building and planting. Whew. What a year. God says, you want to move forward completely rebuilt by my spirit? Then you're going to have to stop intermingling my spirit with your carnality and your flesh and your hunger for the ways of the world and your hunger for the things of this earth. And you've got to get your mind completely clean of the things of the old, the way that was, and get into revelation of the coming and the now. So let me read it to you again. Your job is to pull up and tear down, take apart and demolish. And I'm not talking about any system except your own. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to pull apart pull up on you and tear down on you and take apart and demolish on you carnality and flesh and then start over building and planting. The Holy Spirit gave me the scripture for you as I began typing this letter I wrote. I know by his spirit that he is saying we must be strong and get ready to do what is necessary to rebuild and plant this year in our lives. We must put a watch over our mouths and a guard over our hearts in this season. We must look to the Lord and not put our hope or our faith in people. I'm telling you, the Lord said that so plainly. Get your eyes off people and get your eyes on the Lord. Remember the billboard who showed me? Trust in the Lord. When Gabriel went to heaven, he said, you are being, you have graduated and you are moving up into the master's class of walking with me. And he said, this is your assignment, trust. He said, it's even higher than walking by faith and not by sight. It is trusting when what you see is impossible. When what you feel is impossible, trust in the Lord. Brace yourself. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. We finished 2020 and we, get, we began 2021 ever climbing higher in the presence of the Lord. And that's why this online school coming up beginning next Monday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Coast time. When we start that class, you should be in it. You can even register over the weekend. Debbie's still taking calls all weekend. You should be in it because I know that I know that I know God is going to help us learn how to completely release ourselves from what was and walk in what is coming. 2021 began climbing higher and climbing is hard work. It is not fairy dust. You cannot pour enough oil on your head or sprinkle enough fairy dust that you think is Holy Ghost glory. You got to get away from that kind of spectacular thinking and get into the supernatural and do the work. Climb. Climb higher. Climb higher. Climb higher. It's work. You're going to have to have hinds feet to hold your position and not lose ground. I know. I'm going to get to the numbers. I promised you I would, but you've got to have this to understand them. We began 2021 with a powerful prophetic word for you through the numbers of both the Jewish New Year 5781 that began in, in September the 18th, 2020, in the fall of September the 18th, 2020, we began the Jewish year and write them down, 5781. Sonny, if you're here, I know you're taking notes, write 5781. And now let's take the numbers apart. Let's begin on the right because all of the Hebrew reads right to left. So we begin with the decade of 80 and we are now in 81. We're still in the decade of 80. So for 10 years, the prophetic numbers of the Jewish calendar, 578, now we're one. 80 is the year or the decade of the mouth. Jeremiah just gave us. He said, I'm going to put words in your mouth and they're going to cause you to be able to see. I'm going to say it again. 
I'm going to put words in your mouth and those words are going to cause you to see. 2020 vision, clear. The decade of clear vision. 2020 began our year ago and our eyes adjusted and we can see more into the future and we can see clearly only if you're looking at the future. If you're looking back, you're going to miss what's coming. Are you getting any revelation? I'm going to give you words and the words are going to cause you to see clearly. Now, 5781, 81, 80, the decade of the mouth continues on into 81. We're still talking about your mouth and the words that you say. Add one to that and one is unison, not just unity, which is 82 and we'll go in that in the fall. But now we are in the decade of unison. I'm on do, and Laura saying do. Yeah, we're in unison, you see. Let's both sing it. Do. Can you even distinguish whose voice is whose? No, because unison means we're all on the same frequency, the same tone. Now, it's not about you and me being in unison as much as it is with us being in unison with his frequency. What did he say in Jeremiah? I will put my frequency in your mouth. (laughs) In other words, you better stop saying what you're saying and start getting in unison with what he's saying. Don't trust your own mind this year. Trust his word. Get in unison with him. That's the one. Unison with the Spirit of God. That means if you are if you are not filled with the Spirit of God, you are already in trouble. And you better ask the Lord right now, fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me the sound to be in unison with you. Acts 2, and suddenly the room was filled with the sound of heaven. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Ask him to fill you with the sound of heaven and your unison sound will become his sound becomes your sound. Don't trust your mind this year. Trust your spirit. You have to be in unison with him and we'll finish covering that particular word given by Jesus in John 16 on Monday morning. Now, 5781. 80, the decade of the mouth, one, unison with the Spirit of God. You are saying what he is saying and only what he is saying. That's what he says for you this year. You must be saying what he is saying. What is that? Seven, it is finished. Start saying it is finished. Revelation, the last chapter, he says, I am coming, I am coming, I am coming. And then he says, What do you say in response, bride? Even so, come, Lord Jesus. It is the final, it is finished. The last thing God said on the earth in Genesis was, it is finished. The last thing Jesus said verbally on the earth, on the cross, he hung on the cross and the last three words he said is, it is finished. The final, it is finished, must come from the sound of the bride. The bride must fulfill the third, it is finished. When we say it is finished, guess what? It is finished. He has waited for thousands of years for the bride to fulfill the final, it is finished in unison with the Spirit of God. The Spirit and the bride say, come, it is finished. The spirit and the bride say, come, it is finished. And that is what this year is all about. The bride saying, it is finished. Come, Lord Jesus. Wow. I just have to say, wow. Wow. (laughs) Full circle, wow. wow. This is the year. I'm telling you, this could be the rapture of the bride. Now, don't worry. The church will still be here. If you're not the bride, just a get out of hell freak prayer is not going to be enough to make this first rapture. This first rapture where Jesus says, I'll come like a thief in the night, boom, gone. 
there'll be a little tiny remnant gone. One fourteenth, if my math is correct, and my math is correct. I don't do everything right, but my math is always correct because I spent 30 years getting this equation down straight out of the scripture. Revelation tells us one-seventh will be kept from harm. In, in Revelations 3, 7 through 14, one group will be kept from harm. And then Matthew 25 tells us that when that time comes, only half of that number will actually have enough oil in their lamp, which means one-fourteenth of the church, a very small fragment of the church. And since one means unison and 14 means salvation, he's talking about the true church, the bride, Revelation 22. He's talking about the true church, the bride, will be those who are raptured out. Now the question is, the fork of the road has started today. Which side are you on? We have never been more challenged to make sure we're in the right place than this year. 5781, 80, the decade of the mouth, one in unison with him, saying it is finished with grace. For we are not saved by grace, but we are saved by the Spirit of God calling us giving us grace, which is the power not to sin. Grace is the power not to sin. Not the card to say you can, but the power not to. That's the five. Seven, it is finished, and five, grace. The power not to sin. That's what grace is. It is not a license to sin. It is the power not to. It is not a license to sin. It is the power not to sin. The year, the decade of the mouth, in unison with God, crying out, it is finished with the power not to sin. Now, that's 5781. Overlap it. 2021, we began at midnight last night. 20, the decade of the redeemed. The redemption of for us, the church and the bride. We are the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord, Psalm 107, say so. I'm tying it to your mouth again. If you are redeemed, you better be saying so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You better start saying so. How do you fight the enemy? With your mouth, with words, with sound. You will never defeat a demonic thought with another thought. You can't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with words. You better find your voice. You better start using it, and it better sound like you're filled with the authority of God. Now, 2021. Let's hit the 21. What does 21 mean? If you've Study Tones of the Throne Room, you already know. 21 is the first and only number that has a split definition in it. The split goes two ways. If you don't walk with the Spirit of God and stop looking back. If you don't turn loose of the past. Now, why is this such an important number? Because it is the third circle of it is finished, seven. It is finished, 14, for salvation. And now, 21, 7, 14, 21. Third circle, 7, it is finished. Circle again, it is finished, salvation. Circle again, here we are. It is the T. Do, re, so, T. It is the final seventh in the trilogy. And it is a split. It means if you're walking with God, it's beautiful. But if you cannot and will not get over yourself, if you don't accept the mission to tear down, pull up, take apart, and demolish your flesh, if you don't accept the mission to start over, build, and plant, if you don't accept that mission, you chose your fork. This fork of the road, you chose it. And 21, 
If you do not choose to walk in the Spirit of God, you choose exceeding sinfulness of sin. Don't expect the world around you to look better this year. Brace yourself. Exceeding sinfulness of sin has begun. It's a tough one, but it is right in the numbers, and I cannot take it out. I didn't make it up. It's in the scripture. It's throughout the word. It is the meaning of 21, exceeding sinfulness of sin. Um, Would you grab that biblical mathematics book right there? I'll just read you a few scriptures to help line it up for you. Exceeding sinfulness of sin. That's where the world is going this year. You thought the world was bad? You just wait. This is the year you're going to see what it really means. Exceeding sinfulness of sin is the 21st year. It, it is a time, and I, ha- I have had this old book for years and years. It's a book written by this amazing um, Baptist theologian, Dr. Ed, V-A-L-L-O-W-E. You can order it off of Amazon if it's back in print. It goes in and out of print. But 21, exceeding sinfulness of sin, and it lines right up with the Hebrew also. It is three times seven. It means completeness, spiritual perfection, or this is a powerful year of one's life. It is a powerful year of oneness. Resurrection, divine completeness, and perfection should be what we are after this year. That is our fork of the road, and I'm going to get to that. But let's talk about the way the world is going to go. The history of Israel's wilderness journey discloses that 21 sins were recorded against her from Egypt to Jordan. This number would seem to indicate the exceeding sinfulness of sin. I do not mean that 21 sins are all the sins one can commit, but God used that number to represent the worst of the worst sin. Brace yourself for this year. The world is going to hell in a handbasket, and this year it's going to be like John 16 began. They're going to think that they're doing God a favor when they persecute you. It's no shock to me the way the government is going because I knew this year was not going to be a year that was going to look right. I do not mean that 21 sins are all the sins that can be committed, but God used the number to represent the exceeding sinfulness of sin. A full understanding of these 21 sins can be reviewed by turning back to the study or number 13. Now remember remember Aaron's rod budded, and that was the 13th bud. So what does that mean? It is the year of exceeding sinfulness of sin, but you and I are going to bud throughout the whole year. Every month, a different fruit of the Spirit. Every month, a different manifestation of the Spirit of God. We are going to be so filled with the glory of God this year. The dividing line, the moat between sin and righteousness will have never been as plain as it is this year. That's why you cannot ride the fence anymore. There is no more riding the fence. You better choose and get on the right side or the choice will be made for you and you will be on the fork of the road for exceeding sinfulness of sin. And I'm sorry, I should have stopped and looked to see if you had any questions. Um, Oh, good, you're just taking notes. Good, good, good. Any? Let me make sure there's no questions. Sorry, you're going to have to help me. uh, Okay. Get, get up on the questions if I've missed one. Uh, Colby said, when you gave your message, it's so about being stuck on the other side of the bridegroom's door. It rocked my faith. I will not be stuck banging on the door. And this is what's happening this year, Colby. It ties, tw- Matthew 25 ties to this year. For the fork of the road, you're going to find many who think they're the bride. They're going to be on the road of exceeding sinfulness of sin, thinking that they're under grace and it doesn't matter what they do. Grace is the power not to sin, not the license to sin. We must be on the right fork of the road this year. Have I I missed any questions? Okay, great, 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 great. All right, wonderful. Good. If you see any questions, just point them out to me or read them to me. Now let's keep going on this number 21. In that study, 
13, as you know, means rebellion and depravity. You're going to see rebellion and depravity like we've never seen before this year in the world system. It's every commercial, every TV show, it's already being thrown in our face. Sin, sin, sin. Accept sin, accept sin, accept sin. That's what's being thrown in our face. Mm -hmm. Accept it, accept it. It's just part of this culture. It's just part of this world. Do not accept sin as a part of your life. Oh, yeah. It is exceeding sinfulness of sin in the world. But you are not of this world. Jesus said you are not of the world. You are a citizen of heaven. Now, 13 means rebellion and depravity. In that study, and you, if you want to break down the first 24 numbers, just order today Tones of the Throne Room, the book and the workbook, and it'll be your third level of school of worship. But if you order that, you can study the, the 24 first numbers and what they mean, all written out in, in depth, the study of it. And that's the first 24 tones of the throne room and the sounds that are prayed in there. Now, in that study, it is seen that 13 multiplied by 21 equals 273, the number that needed to be redeemed with five, the number that needed to be redeemed with five shekels per person. That's numbers 3, 46, and 47. Um, um, anyone want to type that out for me? Numbers 3, 46, and 47. These two closely associated it these two numbers, 13 and 21, are so very closely associated, it would seem that 21 is the outgrowth. Remember the budding of Aaron's rod? 21 is the outgrowth of 13, which represents the depraved nature and that 21 is the fruit of the nature of rebellion and depravity. That's how bad it's going to look from the culture of this age this year. It's not our world. We live as the redeemed. We live walking on a different fork of the road, right? That's your choice. In 2 Timothy 3, 2 through 5, Paul lists 21 things which men would do in the last days, and he warns against all 21. This is uh, 2 Timothy 3, verses 2 through 5. I'm going to read it to you. In the last days, Perilous times shall come, and I'm telling you, we're in it. For men shall be, number one, lovers of their own selves. Number one, selfies. It is no longer good enough to take a picture of a person you admire or a hero or a landscape. You have to be in it. Selfie. Men will be lovers of self. Number one, depravity. Number two, covetousness. They want what you have. Socialism. Entitled mentality. Three, boasters. Four, proud. Their mouth, you see, is boasting. That's a sound. It's a prideful sound. Number four, proud, proud or pride. Number five, blasphemers. They speak lies and act like it's truth. And the more they say it, the more people believe it. I've said this for as long as I've been ministering, 41 years, 45 years I've been saying this. The devil will try to tell a lie to you long enough that eventually you believe it. And if you believe it, it becomes truth to you. It's, it's a lie. But it's truth to your heart. It's truth to your mind. It's truth to your spirit. Because whatever you believe is truth to you. That's why you must check your belief system on a regular basis. What do you believe? Five blasphemers. Six, disobedient to parents. We've already seen it. Watch the commercials. Watch the disrespect. Watch the disrespect and disobedience to our culture, to our 1950s way of life. I mean, they make fun of it. One of the new commercials I saw out about, it's a drink. Uh, it says less sugar, more caffeine. I don't remember the name of it. But he talked about, the whole thing was about being disobedient. I'm a rule breaker, he says. Disobedient. 
unthankful. Mm. Glory. We must get our thanksgiving in position. I enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Do not fall trap to the 21 sins of this generation. Unthankful. Number eight, unholy. I said this just a few chapters back. Holy is what God is after. Number nine, without natural affection. In other words, we have been so inundated with unnatural affections in the carnality and the flesh that we've just accepted it. Ten, truce breakers, liars. They make a covenant with you, and before they make it, they broke it. It's happened to me, most of our ministry. But I don't put my faith in people. I love people, and I trust God. And he's the one we make covenant with. And when we make covenant with God through people, and they break covenant, it's not on me, you see. Whatever happens to them happens because they broke covenant, our triune covenant. Truth breakers, number 11, false accusers. That's what John 16 says. They think they'll do God a favor when they persecute you, when they harm you, when they kill you. They think they're doing God a favor. False accusers. 12, incontinent. 13, fierce. That's what we're seeing right now, this fierce anger, fierce hatred, fierce division. 14, despisers of those who are good. 15, traitors. 16, heady. 17, high-minded, heady thought, intel, stuck in the tree of knowledge. Need more knowledge, need more knowledge. Uh, but Timothy says, but never come to the truth. No matter how much knowledge they get, they never get to the bottom line of the truth. And then 17, high-minded, stuck in an intellect instead of walk by the Spirit. 18, lovers of pleasure. Jesus, help us. 19, more than lovers of God. We must love God. 20, having a form of godliness. So, so you realize when he gets to 20, he's not talking about the world. He's talking about the religious church. Amen. Having a form of godliness, religion. 21, but denying the power of God. You have a form of godliness, religion, but no power. And that is the, the very one he ends it with. But having, but denying the power of God. And he said, from such as these 21, turn away. Fork in the road. Let those 21 go that way. I'm going this way. What does 21 mean for us? It's the third circle of it is finished. Rapture. Rapture, rapture, rapture. It could mean the very catching away of the bride this year. But I know it means the catching away of our spirit man out of flesh, out of carnality, out of walking the wrong road, out of going the exceeding sinfulness of sin way. We're not going that way. We're going to walk by the Spirit. To those who are sons and daughters of God, we are led by the Spirit only, and we are not led by the flesh. Separate yourself. Corinthians says, so come out from among them, chapter 6. So come out from among them and be separate. And I will be your father and you will be my sons and my daughters. Do you have any questions? Any, any questions about this year and what it means? I've spent an hour talking to you about what I see this year. I pray that you are totally uh, understanding what I'm saying in the Spirit, 
that the Spirit of the Lord is moving with you and on you. Um, I'm wondering if you have any questions. You can still register for school. <laughs> Sonny said it right. This is going to be watched several times today, and I should have asked you in the very beginning. I'm just reminded to, to tell you to do this. Uh, please share this right now on all your social media platforms and give me a thumbs up. And if you do that, then others can also watch. And yes, please go back and watch it and comment on the uh, not live feed too. Uh, please comment there too. Um, thank you, Sonny. Uh, let's see, Colby. My favorite thing about 21 is that it is the letter Shin. That's right. Which is the number 300, which is Gideon's army, you see. As in Gideon's 300 warriors, Shen is also kind of, the, of like the mark of God. Even the mountains of Jerusalem are in the shape of this number. That's right, which is separation. Thank you, Colby, for bringing that next level out. That is so good. Yes, 21 in the Jewish um, number system, it, it begins and it starts jumping by tens and then by hundreds. And so by the time you get to 21, you're at the number 300, which is Gideon's army. And this should remind us, because we are so in our culture, so focused on numbers, we think if we don't have 1,000 in our church, we don't have a big church, or 10,000 in our church, or 10,000 followers, or whatever. None of that matters, because God said when he had 30,000, you've got too many. You can't watch over that many. You can't keep them accountable. Here, the biggest challenge for me is online keeping you accountable, staying in your face. But here's what I know. The Spirit of God will do that for me. If I keep preaching the truth, the Spirit of God will keep you accountable. If you, It's up to you to allow the Spirit of God to keep you accountable. But I'm here for you. That's why I ask you almost daily to repent. If you need to repent, do it in front of us. Put it in the comments. Once you repent, it's out there. And once you repent, God sees it. Everybody else sees it too. Thank God. And then you can be accountable, and that's God's army. He whittles it down to those who are willing to hold themselves by the Spirit of God accountable. And that's a good word to end with. Will you hold yourself accountable this year by the Spirit of God? Because we are still being separated, and more is coming. I'm sorry to tell you, I know you were hoping that I would say that this is going to be the year that everything lets up and goes back to normal. But I've said this to you now for 10 months. There is no old coming back. You've got to embrace the new. Don't become a pillar to what was and miss what God wants to do in you in this next new move. Remember, Jeremiah said, now we rebuild. And that means we are building something new, not restoring what was. God's got a great future for us, but it is going to be difficult for us this year to stay on the right road and not be pulled across the moat. The division between exceeding sinfulness of sin and rapture. Raptured from the flesh and carnality. This is our year. And remember the tones overlap 5781. Do, re, so, ti, do. Those are our tones. Do, re, so, ti, do. Let's just, Laura, go the keys just for a moment. I don't know if you'll be able to hear them. I'll ask her to turn them up really loud. Uh, turn them up louder than uh, I had you do earlier. I uh, thank you. You're repenting right now. Let's start the year off repenting and in the spirit of God with our, uh, e, are you in e, e minor? Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, A minor. You know me. I heard you playing the E. <laughs> Tundo re so t there you go t do do re so t and then resolve it do 
Those are our sounds. Now let's do it in the spirit. Lebia mosoria makaseria makaso. Hania mosoria. Hedia mosoria. We're repenting, Lord. As a group right now, we repent for the nation. We repent for the church. We repent for ourselves. We repent for our families. We repent. Hedia mosoria makaria moso. Hedia moseria moso. Lebonedia moseria. That's 5781. Le Boria Mocoso. Le Bosedia. Le Biomoso. 8181. Le Biomoso. Which begins again the full circle. Hedio Mosoria Macario Moso. Le Dio. 81. Le Bosoria Macasia Notea Mocasa. De if you have not downloaded the sound, you need to do so. Now, Father, I thank you for the impartation of your spirit right now flowing through this screen, flowing right through this camera to every home, to every person watching, to every person in the sound of my voice right now right now. Father, I bring forth the revolution and the revelation of your word, the revolution of our spirits rising up, bringing revival, a righteous revolution, revival to our land right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that your spirit is moving from coast to coast and border to border. I thank you, Father, that you are bringing a righteous revolution, revival to America. I thank you, Father, that the water of your spirit is coming deep. It is coming pure. It is coming fast. It is coming furious. And I thank you, Father, that there is a washing of the water of the word over your people right now. And I thank you, Lord, that we are being sifted. And what is coming through is exceeding sinfulness of sin. And this tiny little group, Father, is staying in the sifter. Father, for in this case, we are the ones that you will come for. We are being caught up higher. We are separated, Father, from the world from the world system, from the culture of this age, Father. One fork in the road exceeding sinfulness of sin, the other fork in the road we are on, and that is the one of rapture. We are being raptured from flesh. We're being raptured from carnality. I repent for loving this world more than loving you. You deserve a bride who loves you and is thinking on you and is praying and interceding from the sound of your spirit. And so, Father, I thank you that as we begin 2021, we overlap 5781, the year and decade of the mouth crying out in unison with the Spirit of God, not crying out in unison with the world. We sound like you and you only, saying it is finished with the power of grace to not sin. And Father, I thank you that as the redeemed in 20, we step over into 21. The rapture from our flesh and our carnality and old ways are gone. I thank you, Father, that we look to the future with the word of you in our mouth, predict, predicting and projecting and professing, declaring and decreeing that 2021 will be a year of separation from those who decide to walk with the devil and his ways, those who take on the Antichrist spirit, and those of us who walk on this narrow road of being raptured from self, from carnality, from flesh, and those 21 sins that I read in the last days. Many will fall that way, but we will go your way. Now, Father, I thank you for the impartation of the Spirit of God coming upon each and every person as they're on their knees right now, as they're crying out for this to be the year of the rapture. Father, the bride is crying out for you to come. We need you, Father. We need you to send the Son. We need the bridegroom. Come. We need the bridegroom, Father. Come. Come, 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 come. I love you with my whole heart. Continue to cry out through the day. 
Watch what the Spirit of God is doing in you. Become totally and completely accountable to the Spirit of God within you. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Become accountable. He will keep you in line if you let Him. He will not just be the badge of authority through the name of Jesus, but He will be the sheriff who has the gun, who helps you through the power of the Spirit of God walk holy, righteous, clean before Him. Thank you, Father, for the washing of your word, bringing us into a position of clean, holy, pure, released from carnality of the mind, released from carnality of the flesh, released from carnality in our bodies, bringing healing, healing to our bodies, healing to our minds. In the mighty name of Jesus, we begin 2021 on a full run toward glory, a full run in your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not fall off the narrow road. I love you all. Stay faithful. Come on and register and obey God if he's talking to you about starting school with us. But even if you're not in school, I'll still come to you through YouTube on Monday morning for about a 45-minute Bible study. We'll all do it together. We'll hit John 16 right straight on the head. All right. I love you. Happy New Year.